here this evening at Sorrento's, located on Parkman Road in Warren, Ohio. It's such a lovely atmosphere. I know many of you are probably familiar with, with what goes on inside, but you may not have been back here to this lovely garden. I'm going to talk to Joe a little bit about it. Joe, tell me how long the garden's been here. Uh, the garden itself uh, since 1991. And do, do a lot of people utilize the garden? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'd say 20, 30% of all our brides and grooms, they get married back here. Oh, wow. Uh, it, you know, get uh, two for the price of one, you know, not as much traveling time. Yeah, that's very true because it is, it's very lovely back here. Tell me a little bit about the history of the restaurant. Uh, the restaurant was founded in 1972 uh, by my uncle and uh, that's when we came here from Italy. And my brother, which is still my partner, he took over in 1974, 75. I've been here since 75 also, uh, but I became owner in 1989. And, I, and, and it's still located here on Parkman Road. Still a lot of people. Parkman Road, yes. A lot of people moved to Elm Road, 422. Yes. Tell me what keeps you here on Parkman Road. I tell you what, we've been very fortunate because uh, the locals have been great, and even uh, the people that have moved away, you know, still stop and see us every now and then. So it works out real fine, real good. I'm here at Sorrento's with Mr. and Mrs. Cordova. They just got married, and they chose Sorrento's for their wedding reception. Tell us why you decided to come to Sorrento's. Well, we've known about Sorrento's for a long time, and we love the food here. The Italian food is great. Mauro is wonderful. He keeps us very organized, and he stays on. And we just get everything done in such a beautiful, beautiful evening. I, I've heard so many raves about Mauro tonight. i got to meet Mauro <laughs> before I leave. So I'm sure you didn't know why you came here. You just kind of did what you're supposed to do. That's correct. Oh, very good. Good. Keep him. Keep him. <laughs> so what did you guys have on your menu tonight? Uh, we had monster trolley meatball and baked chicken and green beans and we have a whole fruit tree back there. It, he just adds all his right touches for a great summer evening meal. I'm here at a wedding reception at Sorrento's tonight and I'm with Mauro. That's all I keep hearing. Mauro, Mauro, Mauro. Everyone loves Mauro. Mauro, tell us how you keep your customers so happy. Well, my customers are no longer my customers. My customers are my friends. Been here for 39 years. Everybody knows who I am, where I live, how many kids I have. It is like a family restaurant, and it is a family restaurant. And you know, I hear that over and over. That's why people come. That's why people want to eat here. It's not just the food. It's they're treated like they're at home with their family. We have people come from Cortland, Holland, from all over Trumbull County, and some are owning County, too. And I think that's what kept us in business all these years, 39 years, I said. It's I think so too. Tell me a little bit about some of the uh, menu items that you have. Well, we have a lot of, we specialize in Italian food, you know. Our biggest sell is the fresh eggplants. I mean, we got our own eggplants. Right now we have fresh zucchini out of my garden. You know, this, this is what brings the customers here. Nothing comes out of the box. Everything's made here. Every day. Joe was telling us that the bread's made fresh here, no preservatives. Every morning I get here at 5 o'clock in the morning and bake my bread. We love coming here. Um, been coming here a long time. It's a um, very, they treat you like family and we feel like we're part of the family. I, they do, they truly do embrace their customer. Even if you're in the restaurant, or if you're out on the street, they're very, very welcoming, very nice. What did you guys have tonight? I had the lasagna and um, my dinner mate had the eggplant parmesan which is one of our favorites too. I don't have to look at the menu. I always get lasagna. Do you? Mm -hmm. I heard that's a crowd pleaser. I, I enjoy it and there's plenty of it. We're here with a table full of really fun folks tonight and we're gonna talk to Kathy and Kathy's gonna tell us what they ate and why they enjoy coming to Sorrento's. Well, we're from the Warren area also. I don't live in Warren now, but we are from the Warren area and we work and this was like a nice night out to come out and, you know, have something to eat. And we had fish, we had pasta, and ginger with greens. And you had... Yeah, so it's good. And it's economical. It is. So I decided to try the lasagna tonight. It's been a while since I've had some lasagna here, but I remember the great sauce taste. Mmm, perfect. The noodles are homemade. The sauce is scrumptious. You can taste the fresh tomatoes and the basil, oregano. It's great. 
Joe, thanks so much for having me here tonight. Oh, thank you. Anytime. The restaurant is wonderful. It felt like I was at home, like always. And you should. Yep. The sauce was great. I want to make sure that everyone knows that you need to visit Sorrento's on Parkman Road in Warren, Ohio. It's a great family restaurant with excellent food. For an authentic diner experience, look no further than the Steel Trolley Diner in downtown Lisbon, Ohio. Award-winning hamburgers with all of your favorite toppings, fresh cut fries and onion rings, delicious milkshakes, and some of the best homemade pies you'll find anywhere. Stop by the Marketplace and pick up Steel Trolley's original topping sauces, t-shirts, and classic candies. For hometown service and great food, visit the Steel Trolley Diner in Lisbon, Ohio today. Follow us on Facebook or at SteelTrolleyDiner.com. Join us for the Home Plate Oktoberfest. That's September 18th at the Saxon Club in Youngstown from 4 to 8. Ein Prozent! <laughs> Home Plate Home Style is brought to you in part by Ruli Brothers Markets. Helga. And I'm Mitch. Welcome to Home Plate Home Style. And today we're making sandwiches out here, aren't we? In front of on beautiful Mabel Schwabel. Yes. What a cute little name. Yeah, what are you going to make know? today? Okay, I'm making a silver club. You know, years ago down the road there was this, this, the Silver Mirror. There was a restaurant all the way down in Struthers. And they had the best sandwich and Wolfgang loves it. It's a club sandwich which is made with uh, bacon, lettuce and tomato with an egg on top. And that's what I'm going to show you how to make it today. Your that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to put the bacon right in here. We're cooking up a storm here. It's a little windy, so... This might attract the neighbors, by yeah, the way. Yeah, it's going to smell good, delicious. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, not eight pieces. So oh. making a good sandwich, yeah. There you go. How's that? Beautiful. Now that's going to need a little time to cook. Okay. okay. And then it's all cooked up, then I show you how to put it together. Okay, well the and one I have to work oh, on, this is a flatbread from Swable. Very nice, fresh product, I might add. And we're going to do a crab salad. Now my uh, producer suggested sometimes you can use some of your leftover seafood. Um, so what we have here is kind of an Asian flair. It's got sesame oil, a little bit of soy sauce, some parsley, and some crab. Smells good. We're going to lay a piece of lettuce there. We want to take the spine out just so that it folds a little easier and it creates a little smoother bed. How's the bacon doing over really, there? Really, really good. Can you smell it? Yeah. I love the smell of bacon. Yeah. And you put that next to fresh bread coming out of the factory here. It's yeah. amazing. So We're going to throw this in the center. Uh, depends who you're feeding. You might put a smaller portion for your kids. Or your, well, I don't know. My That's wife eats as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to fold this in half. Actually, you could also add cheese for the cheese people out there. And I'm one of them. So I'm going to add a little cheese before I do that. Oh, that looks delicious. Very nice. Get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. Fold that. Now you want to just try to keep it inside when you cut it. Cut that in half. See, I'm kind of holding the ends down. And then we'll lay it on the plate. We can garnish that with anything from a slice of tomato to a piece of fruit. Now we're going to get back to Helga. In the meantime, we have some toast. This is from the Italian bread farmer. Oh, I love this bread. Schwabels. Yeah, yeah it's delicious. It's nice great. and fresh. I'm, I toasted it right up there. Did you see me Could get you up fit there? It in yes, there? Yes, I know. You know, you. I didn't know she could climb like that, Wolfgang. <laughs> so where's our knife over here? We put some mayo on. And a little bit of mayo on your toast. And we take three pieces because it's going to be a club sandwich. Okay. And this one here in the middle. Then we're going to put the other side. And now we're going to put, oh, you can cut the meantime. You can cut my tomato. Some sliced right? tomato? Yeah, you know, that's your job. You know. I know, I'm the slicer dicer. Whenever there is something to slice, I'm going to get Mitch to do it because he's so good at it. Okay, good and healthy salad over here. No? Yes, and we're taking about three slices of tomato. Oh, this is a nice sandwich. And of course, we have to have salt. Not too much salt because you have bacon on there, which is salty sometimes. That's a smart thought. Yeah, and now we're going to put one slice on top, make it real nice. And we put a little bit more mayo on there. Are you guys getting hungry uh -huh. out there? And that mayo <laughs> helps everything stick again, I know. right? Uh -huh. So 
now we're gonna put the bacon on. We love bacon. You can don't hear we? that egg sizzling away yeah. in there. And now we're waiting for this egg to get done. We'll see if it needs Almost. a little bit more. It's about sunny side right now. Yeah, Let me get closer for you. Yeah. Now we take this beautiful egg and set it right up here. Okay, I'm gonna turn this, this off. Yeah. Okay. And we put the other piece on it. And now comes the job. And I think I'll let you do that. You, you have want that me to nice cut it? Do we have toothpicks for this? Yeah, right here. Okay. Oh my God, this is going to be a beautiful sandwich. And then we're going to put it on a nice plate. All right. And we're going to set They're it right up. Right in there. And, and you we're flip them? Flip them out. Yeah. Look. Beautiful. Oh that is perfect. My God. Isn't that, that is nice? Perfect. Yeah, we get that stuck on there. Okay, let's move this here too. Okay. That is beautiful. Look at the egg. That's perfectly yeah. done. No, no. And nice. we put some chips. This is how they served at the silver mirror, which you know, is not here anymore. I can see and why this is one of Wolfgang's uh, favorite. Wolfgang's favorite sandwich. This is right. Helga. And I'm Mitch, and who's going to get to that first? Oh, yeah, I know. I'm first. <laughs> Bye -bye I'm you. Bye-bye now. Kevin, so I'm looking to paint my front door and I need an inexpensive way to choose a paint color. Well, I have an idea for you that's very inexpensive. It's only going to cost you um, really the cost of printing out a photo. Okay. So take a photo of your house and print it out and then in the photo cut out the center where the door is. All right. Uh, next thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to your neighborhood paint store okay. and you're going to pick out a, a number of paint chips and paint chips are free so once again very inexpensive. Okay. All you're going to do then is slide in the color of the door. Alright so you're changing the, the colors now what colors work best for what kind of houses? Well generally if you have a house that is dark and you want to pop a color you're going to pick a light colored door. And if you have a light color, if you have a light colored house and you want to pop a color, you're going to choose a dark color. Okay, so this is a quick and easy and inexpensive way to make an improvement on your house. Very quick and very easy and no money. All right. All right, we'll join us next time when we'll have another great tip. Join us for the Greek Festival at Archangel Michael Greek Orthodox Church in Camel, Ohio. September 16th, 17th, and 18th, we've got the best Greek food in town. Games, Greek music, dancing, and so much more. Mark your calendar now. Clarence Dell Cake is now open in Sharon, PA. Our elegant wedding cakes, creative novelty cakes, and our delectable cupcakes are now available at two locations. Discover Clarence Dell Cake in Boardman and now open in downtown Sharon. I'm Paula Jasper, and welcome to Explore the Mahoning Valley here on Home Plate. And I am at Schwabel's Baking Company, standing here with Lee Schwabel, who has a magnificent title, and I'm going to let him give it. It's Director of Corporate Communications. Just an, another cog in the wheel. Well, it's quite a cog in the wheel, and we've been entertained and shown different parts of the factory. Uh, it's going to be quite an adventure today. Well, welcome first, Paula. We're glad you're here. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's a special day to have you folks here from Home Plate. Um, we just actually went through uh, the Schwabel Baking Facility here in Youngstown to see how Schwabel's bread is baked, how it's made. And so we saw an array of things from how we mix the bread and 
how we bake it, and how we wrap the bread. So it's a, it's kind of an interesting process. That's actually fascinating. We have a lot of school kids and a lot of folks that come through on tours. Uh, a loaf of bread actually takes, Schwebel's bread that is, takes eight hours to make from beginning to end. And the, the rye bread, all that hearth bread takes about 28 hours from start to finish. My personal favorite, I just have to throw it in. <laughs> I love, Do I it. love that, uh, the uh, uh, rye. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so good. It's a part of my uh, staple. It's been around for about 100 and almost 106 years. Oh, well, goodness. We I still have I the same recipe that, that my great grandmother and grandfather used when they opened. Really? Yeah. Well, it has everything everything to it it's a serious delicious loaf of bread and the making of bread doesn't have to be a casual endeavor at all i mean you have all kinds of very specified equipment we do we do it's definitely a science you know baking is about time and temperature and we take that very seriously here and we have excellent excellent people who are responsible for baking the bread every day Uh, they have a lot of experience and i think that Uh, really helps make the bread so good. Here we are outside talking about the toaster mobile with Lee Schwebel and a friend of his who made this all happen. And your name is? Eric Johnston. Eric and Lee. You can tell they're sort of excited about this. This is their baby. So uh, let me uh, first of all hand it over to you, Lee. Tell me how this got started. Well, it was really a, just a, just a kind of a pipe dream, just kind of an idea that we had. Um, actually, my father said, you know, we have this old 1937 diamond tea. Why not? Let's come up with something else that's kind of different. And so I thought of maybe a toaster mobile. And I went to Eric, and it sort of took off from there. He really helped, really helped make it happen. Otherwise, it'd still be an old truck. So you really are the guy who made this toaster mobile happen? Well, we kind of worked, it was a joint venture, and uh, we just happened to know, uh, you know, we're all, I'm a car guy, so I know a lot of car guys out there, and they all like to customize stuff, and uh, once we presented the ideas to these people, they ran with some of their own ideas, so it just kind of snowballed, and it was really, really neat. Well, first, let's separate just slightly so that Ron can get a look at, now this is the, the wonderful head-on shot of Mabel Schwabel. Yeah, we'll tell you how that came about. All right, okay. Tell me about how did Mabel Schwabel, how did the name happen? Well, we wanted to have a name, and we knew that it was a girl. We just, we just knew it was a girl. <laughs> Most vehicles are girls anyway, but... We put it on our Facebook page. We have a Schwabel's Bread official fan page. And we had like 80 to 100 people give us names. And then we had uh, voting and we selected the name Mabel Schwabel. I have to admit, I really like the idea of Mabel on the road. Now, if we move around to this side, whoa, we begin to get some sense of the scope of the toaster mobile. And we have a button up front, and you can run it up and down. Whoa! And then it goes up, no problem. That's a big toaster. And then we installed the uh, red coils on the side to make it look like a real inside of a toaster. And we have big red LED lights on the inside that illuminate the whole side in, in a glowing red. So it looks like the toaster is actually on. So here we are, uh, standing in front of Mabel, out here at Schwabel's. And I want to thank Lee Schwabel so much for uh, offering us to the to see your wonderful bakery, your wonderful new road gimmick that I just think is terrific, and also to allow Mitch and Helga to create some of their really wonderful sandwiches. Well, thank you. It was a wonderful day for us. We really appreciate you coming. It was a lot of fun. And your, your whole crew from Home Plate is a great group, and we're really happy you came. So thank you. Well, here we are, Youngstown, Ohio, signing off at Schwabel's. Hi, I'm Herb. And I'm Wolfgang. And we're the Fixer Uppers. We're here to help you with home repair today. Wolfgang, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to do some repair on wallpaper. When you have expensive wallpaper in the house, the kids 
take a pen and mark all over it or you knock a hole in it, you want to be able to repair it instead of spending $5,000 to repair the whole room. I matched a piece of wallpaper and we're gonna fit that and match the design. We're gonna put a tire patch on the wall. I matched the pattern. Now I'm gonna take a sharp wallpaper knife and I put a line around the outside of the damage. And I cut the paper all the way through to the drywall. Now we have to take this out because that's the damage part. We match the pattern to the hole. Got to watch this, the edges don't come up. That's the complete job. And it's a perfect match. And any homeowner can do that. They just need to have the proper tools. And once you've seen it demonstrated, it should be very simple to fix up what someone else has messed up. If you're tired of seeing this every time you try to use the toaster with the microwave, it's time to call Tedco Electric. With over 25 years of commercial and residential experience, call Tedco for all of your electrical needs. Call 330-720-8587. Licensed, insured, and affordable. Call Tedco Electric today. Join us for the 12th Annual Harvest Day at the Villa Maria Community Center in Villa Maria, Pennsylvania, Saturday, October 1st from noon to 5. This free event is fun for the whole family. Food, music, arts and crafts, hay rides, and so much more. Be sure to join us. Now and for the future, YSU Metro College, serving everyone's personal and professional needs. You know, it's kind of exciting for me this morning uh, to welcome uh, these young men, and especially Rick Blair, since I've known him since he was yay high. And I never thought that I would be interviewing him, then he's a musician. <laughs> And then, of course, I met you just recently at Oh Wow. You know, we, everybody loves Oh Wow, and I love, we love to push Oh Wow, yeah. you know. Um, Rick, tell me, how did you get started in music? I never thought you'd be a musician. Well, Sophia, you were a nice kid. You're teasing me a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't know what that says about my musical ability. Uh, my, my parents had me taking piano lessons when I was a child, and from there, uh, I started playing the upright bass in the Boardman Orchestra program, and I actually met my wife in the junior high orchestra, um, but through there, and then I was telling these guys earlier that I started playing guitar when I was a freshman in college. Uh, just my roommate had one, and I, I spent probably a little more time with his guitar than I did with my books, but um, just went from there, and, and I've always loved music. I started playing music uh, when I was really young. My brother and I played together. I was really fortunate to have a family that supported our music and a lot of family members played and my grandfather was sort of our driving uh, musical influence or bloodline or what have you. But um, yeah, my brother and I have played for a long time in different bands and just kept it together and are still playing. Hey, good looking, 
getting dark and the leaves are still green. Hey now, blue eyes, won't you come take my hand? Cause I want to show you all over the room. Won't you come take my hand Your lips are so sweet And I want to kiss you Won't you come home with me? Cause I wanna hold you close in my arms. Hey, pretty lady, won't you come home with me? I've got a bed and it's ready for you. I want to thank you for being here on Expressions, the both of you, Rick and Angelo. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you again next week on Home Plate.